The thought of coming here is just mind-blowing. I thought it was going to be the worst experience of my life. I always compare it to being at school. Um, there are bullies within the prison, but I don't think you'll ever be able to stamp out that, what goes on. Diane is serving two and a half years for committing fraud. Anne, 12 years for conspiracy to supply drugs. For both, their first time behind bars was daunting. Devastating. I think I cried constantly all night. It was just horrific. Very sad, very upset. I do beat myself up for it and I do feel totally responsible for what I've put my family through. Prison may be about punishment, but it's also about rehabilitation. It offers courses run by Western College and finds some inmates jobs they can do from inside jail. Diane works for the National Career Service. I knew that I had to get out of that cell and I made myself get out of there. As tough as it was, I thought there is no way I'm going to rot in this cell. Although Eastwood Park has seen many changes over the last 20 years, one thing has stayed the same. The fact that staff agree with estimates that 50% of inmates here and in every other women's prison in the country are themselves the victims of abuse. Since it first opened, Eastwood Park has tried different ways to try and break that cycle. The current governor has been in place since last September. She believes giving women the ability to find work once they're released is the most important thing the prison does. It's incredibly difficult for women to turn around and walk away from somebody who might be abusing them um, with children, potentially very young children, when actually the alternative is to be on the street. So actually if you give them that opportunity where they can earn a living and they can sustain a life independent of that, it does give them a chance. Most women prisoners are on short sentences. The governor wants judges to consider giving longer sentences to the most vulnerable. It's absolutely impossible in a few short weeks to turn somebody's life around and undo decades of abuse. The Bishop of Gloucester makes regular visits to Eastwood Park. I spent time with a number of women who are about to be released and I suspect a lot of people would imagine they'd be really excited um, and happy about that but actually there was so much fear and anxiety. So a lot of those women they are going back out either to places which don't feel safe for them Many of them are homeless. So for a lot of those women, they will reoffend and they will be back in prison. The bishop agrees many abused women would benefit from longer sentences to try to stop jail being a short-term refuge they keep coming back to and start being a place to properly plan their escape from a lifetime of abuse. I've been behind these bars. I know how transgender prisoners are treated and it's not good. Eastwood Park hit the headlines last autumn when prisoner Tara Hudson was moved here from Bristol Men's Prison following a nationwide campaign. Many had been outraged that Tara, who'd been born male but lived as a woman for the past decade, had first been taken to a men's jail after pleading guilty to assault. I felt that like I had no rights. I felt like an animal in a zoo. Around 160,000 people signed a petition to get Tara moved to a women's prison. After seven days, the Ministry of Justice agreed and she was transferred to Eastwood Park. But when she arrived, Tara says staff didn't know what to do with her. Because of my gender identity, uh, they felt that they needed to lock me up in segregation and keep me away from the main population of the prison. The Ministry of Justice insists transgender prisoners are managed safely and in accordance with the law. Tara says she was kept in her cell while other prisoners were allowed out to do college courses and go to the gym. I didn't feel like I was equal to the other prisoners. And I think, yeah, if you've done something bad, you should go to prison and she, you should be punished for that. But to be treated differently to other prisoners. What's your message to the government if they're watching this? What changes need to take place here? Better training of staff and more understanding. Tara didn't have a gender recognition certificate, the piece of paper to say she's legally now a woman. If she'd had the certificate, Ministry of Justice guidelines say she would have been sent to a women's prison first. But the certificate's hard to come by 
And just like Tara, lots of transgender people simply don't have it. The government says discretion can be shown and a national review is also taking place looking at what improvements can be made. The governor of Eastwood Park welcomes clearer rules but says a one-size-fits-all approach won't work. Transgender people are at different states of transition and they have different backgrounds and they're in different states not just physically but emotionally and mentally as well and I think a basic set of guidelines is always useful uh, but actually we should assess the people as individuals. Managing the needs of those individuals has become one of the biggest challenges the prison now faces. Like all jails, Eastwood Park has an ongoing problem with drugs. Sarah was a dealer and heroin addict for 10 years before she was caught and brought to prison. Before I went in, I thought it's never possible to get off heroin. I'd never seen anyone do it. As soon as I sat on the sofas in reception, I just thought, this, I've got to use this now as an opportunity. I thought, I don't want to be in and out of this for the rest of my life because there's no point in living for, for me. Sarah volunteered to take part in a drugs recovery programme which meant she could live on a detox wing. But even there, drugs were still available. Yeah, I got offered it um, like halfway through my sentence when I was clean as well. And I just thought I just didn't want anything to do with it, to be honest. It was deemed tempting to me then, because I knew what, I, what I'd gone through to get to where I was. Keeping drugs out of prison is something staff say has got harder. There's um, a much increased use of drug abuse. Um, the substance misuse um, issues that we get here are massive. Should you be doing more to stop drugs getting into prison in the first place? Well, obviously we do everything we can, security-wise, um, to stop drugs coming in, but there are always ways of getting drugs in. Staff here use detection dogs to search the prison and check visitors, but of course jails house some sophisticated criminals, and by the time officers have worked out one way drugs are getting in, often inmates have already thought of another. The shortage of prison staff also makes tackling drugs difficult. It's not yet known how many of the new officers the government promised today will be based at Eastwood Park. In the meantime, the governor says efforts have to be concentrated on helping the inmates who want to be helped. They've set up a scheme with the Avon in Wiltshire Mental Health Partnership where prisoners, like Sarah, become mentors to other inmates. They tell me things that they wouldn't tell the staff because they feel like the staff are just going to tell other people within the authority of the prison. It's actually really useful for the other women to have, have other prisoners to talk to because you know, they can relate to them really well and, and it gives the women a sense of, of purpose. Although mentoring is now helping the situation, there are other concerns. The growing popularity of psychoactive drugs known as legal highs. The individuals react quite differently to them. Um, the the behaviour is quite unpredictable. So, And even the women themselves will say, some of them say they're actually too frightened to take it because they don't know what outcome they're going to get. When prisoners are caught with drugs, they lose privileges and can have days added on to their sentences. But it's a risk many continue to take. Lee Madden, BBC Points West, inside Eastwood Park.